Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and today I'm bringing you a study after Granville Redmond. It's called In Southern California. Nice painting. Um, Granville Redmond, I'm going to give you some biographical, biographic, biographical, biographical stuff here in a minute. I got the wiki page up. Um, he was a tonalist California guy, you know. Um, I select this painting. I There's a lot of Granville Redmond scenes that I would never ever do a study after. I like Granville, but we don't overlap very much. But we definitely did on this particular scene. So um, I had a folder on my desktop, which is something I recommend you do as you're coming across paintings that you like and you think are cool you know even if it's a tiny tiny image of it you don't need a big image to make a study um, and this was a very tiny image and I did blow it up a bit using a program called um, what is that called gigapixel not gigapixel is it gigapixel well, I'll give you the name here because this will help you out. it is gigapixel by Topaz works great for sampling things up you can only go so far and give you some weird artifacts, but even if you're not able to sample it up, you don't need all the detail you're not seeing anyway to make a study, to be honest. I mean, and of course, I'm always honest with you. Um, now, so there's a live version of this, uh, which would be about two something hours long. Uh, the live version is going to have a little bit more of a, You're going to see the reference image. You're going to see me describing uh, how I'm breaking that down into my drawing stage and you're gonna see the uh, color mixing session at least in this initial one and then in the live videos of course I always talk about what colors are my palette and uh, but for the benefit of you who is you know not a member but I still love you and I still want to help um, I'm painting on uh, masonite also known as hardboard and uh, the size of this one looks to be an 8 by 12 and uh, yeah it's pretty long and skinny but uh, now the hardboard has been prepped with two coats of transparent gesso I had someone email me about that the other day and I'll tr tr definitely try because I know all those new members, members are new peeps coming around some of you will become members some of you you know just want to dip in and check it out yeah check it out all good um, so what am I doing my under uh, my drawing here uh, that is burnt number and the reason I was doing burnt number on this particular day was I wasn't sure I was going to get into the color and as it turned out um, I, I went home for lunch and I came home and had enough time to get into a color session so that was awesome and uh, like I said in the live area I go through that whole mixing process at least you know what I like to do prior to starting jumping in the painting is maybe mix you know the main colors in the sky and there you can see that the main colors in the sky main colors in the ground there wasn't a huge spread of colors in this uh, painting by Granville that I made a study after so uh, you know and the sky very interesting it has like a lot of kind of greeny stuff in it but I uh, try and generally avoid that. Um, oh, well, you, you say, I, I'm not a member, but I want to know what was in the sky. Well, a little bit of phthalo, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre, some white, uh, a little bit of Mike's gray, which is just, you know, a gray mixed from ivory, uh, black, and uh, white, and uh, some raw umber. And then I had to keep bringing in bits of cad yellow, which cad yellow when it hits that phthalo it just wants to go green as but I pulled it off and he had that sort of effect a lot of times too he may have done some glazing and so I don't know um, but you could paint the sky like sort of normally and then glaze it with the yellow and get an effect kind of like what I think he did but it's all good yeah I don't feel like I need to glaze to I can get the color with the glaze I can get the color without a glaze there are some effects that you really can't get I uh, saw a quick flash of the uh, reference image there I know that's the other thing I want to talk about so and I, I got really involved with this in the uh, the live session too but um, so my reference image by him was really flat like there wasn't a lot of contrast in it I thought the comp composition was awesome but I suspected that it was one of these cases where there was a bunch of it was a dirty painting 
So um, what I do when I'm going to do a study is uh, if I need to juice the image up, increase the contrast. Um, if there's things that I really don't like about it, I'll change it, you know. Um, and I go after making a good painting that's, you know, somewhat faithful. Uh, the idea is to get uh, that good stuff from Granville. You know, when you're doing a study after a master, you definitely want to, you know, learn uh, how to do things the way they're doing it. And of course, in the case of these old fellas, you know, we don't know how they painted. We can only guess, you know, it was a real challenge for me. Um, you know, when I first started going after the tonalist sort of look, you know, there was no real instruction. Later on, about two or three years in, I found Dennis Sheehan, uh, who I really love his work, and he's really awesome at teaching as well. But, you know, I don't really have this... I got some things off of Dennis, but, you know, I had to ultimately had to do my own thing, as you will, you know, if you're going to be any kind of decent painter, you need to to do your own thing but you can get things you get things off of me get things off of whoever but uh you know when Sheehan came along I'd already been doing tonalism about three years on my own so I have my own ideas about things too um but he had a lot of good tips for me and I definitely integrated some of that into my process no questions about that yeah and one thing I have in common with uh with Dennis is our stuff looks different but um we both lay it down pretty immediately and then when we go back we're always hesitant to really mess it up <laughs> one thing we don't have in common is he doesn't use uh, photographic reference and uh, and he gives he, he really uh, I was he had an academy of uh, his own website back in like 2011 2012 when I was um, studying this stuff and uh, he showed a few examples of like um, paintings he'd made from photos and they were terribly stiff they weren't like the usual Sheehan feel they were nice paintings but they were not great and uh, he, he gave all his reasons for like he start he likes to kind of smear things around and start finding shapes and and that's great and he's also been doing it since the 70s or something like he's an old guy you know or 80s I don't know long time and that's the thing too when you've been doing things a long time then you sort of have an eternal vocabulary of trees and paths and ponds and skies and uh, you can go from there yeah um, there are times I did see him utilize reference but he would just grab a bit here and a bit there and it's all good it all works out uh, for my part I have my own approach to reference and if you've been with me any length of time at all you'll you'll know a bit about what that is but uh, um, really it, it's, it entails manipulating that reference and getting it looking pretty interesting before starting my painting it might even be a bit garish you know it wouldn't be something you'd want to print out and sell on its own you know but as you know, grist for the meal mill as something that's going to stimulate a painting um, that's what I shoot for and I get better at that all the time yeah so anyway I did pump up old Granville's uh, painting quite a lot yeah and as a matter of fact it, it in the live uh, I'm really pushing on membership area today aren't I yeah uh, in the membership area I actually show the flat one with my juiced up one and in that membership area there's several examples of me taking a photographic reference and, and taking you through my process of uh, you know juicing it up as I'll say you know um, because ultimately, you know, landscape painting, you know, it's all about payoff. You know, you have, uh, you you really want to make things pay. If you're just doing really super boring uh, landscapes, you know, nobody's going to want to look at them or buy them except possibly your mom. She will. She'll buy your painting off you. She'll show you can take your every time you do a painting, you can take it over to mom's house and say, "Look, mom. Oh, it's very nice." You're so talented. You know, anyway. Uh, what else we want to cover here? We got to another four minutes or so. So, oh, I, I promised you a bio. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. And so many people have tuned out already. But, hey, because you didn't, you get to learn, okay? Early years. One of the, uh, let's see. Oh, um, yeah. So, he was born in 1871, and he passed in uh, 1935. Uh, and he was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to a hearing family, uh, but he's deaf. He's uh, 
He contracted scarlet fever around two and a half to the age of three. When he recovered, he found he was found to be deaf. This prompted his family's decision to move from the East Coast to San Jose, California, which is a place I lived for a long time. Um, the, po the possibility of his education at Berkeley School for the Deaf, yes. Granville attended the California School for the Deaf from Berkeley from 1879 to 1890, where his artistic talents are recognized and encouraged. His teacher da -da 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 -da, taught him painting, drawing, and pantomime. When he graduated, uh, he enrolled in School of Design. And then you become a painter, and da 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 da. Yeah, go to Wikipedia. I've spelled his name correctly. Um, but he has a lot of lovely paintings. Yeah, um, he's a good painter. And when you know him, and uh, there's a couple others in California that were doing the toneless thing, and uh, as well, you should. This scene doesn't look uh, someone, someone out here thought it was some other place. Um, and I'm like. No, it's Southern California. I don't know. I don't know Southern California. I've never even been there. I mean, I was born there. I was born in, um, you know, a city in Southern California, but I was uh, not uh, not not that long before my folks moved moved us out of there. Yeah, I know Northern California. And to me, this scene looks like it could even be Northern California. You know. Anyway. Um, so you want a few more tips I gotta get I gotta give you some tips for you guys and hung out so oh, let's talk about this so there you see I'm showing you the reference again oh sweet I am you could pull this one up if you want to you know follow along if you want to follow along again members area by the way I'm gonna have this uh, one for sale up in my store I'll be popping a link underneath the video um, at some point like if you go to the store proper you won't see it but if you follow the link you will so you'll be in with the in crowd the people that are hip um, I got to redo my store I'm in the process of talking to my um, the people that I you know I use Squarespace and the, their store has been very challenging for me but um, um, yeah, I'm trying to find ways to you know increase the income from painting because uh, the uh, the world crisis has really impacted my business here and the stu visitors visitors I used to get to the studio you know that you're not really seeing that anymore so hopefully they'll start again and it, either way I'm, I'm very serious about um, continuing my painting and, and, and teaching as well so um, if this one catches your eye you know um, I'll be flogging it there uh, for around I would just do uh, we'll do 300 that's fine US I should say um, and that includes the old uh, international shipping. And um, now, if like you're buying that tomorrow, uh, I might need a day or two to make sure it gets a good coating of liquid before I, sh I ship it off. But I always ship these things very uh, soon after um, people um, purchase them. And uh, usually with a little bonus gift, I might say. And these days, some of those bonuses have been getting pretty sweet. So I know, I'm pitching you. And you're just here for the tips. Um, yeah, well, one thing I was going to say, I got a minute. Greens. All of his greens were like really flat. Um, I ended up just checking reds and reds and reds. And what kind of reds do I throw in? Since you're, you know, very worthy since you've made it to the last minute. It's always like the burnt siennas, actually cad red. Try throwing some cad red in your next green mixture and you're going to go, whoa. That Michael, that M. Francis, he's so on. Thank you, Michael. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end like this. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you coming around. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can ask me in the comments uh, section there. Shoot me an email. It's all good. Um, until I come back with another video, though, do me a favor. Do me a solid. Take good care of yourselves and all your your loved ones and try and love uh, and be compassionate towards people who have points of view that uh, are alternate to your own um, and uh, while you're doing all that take good care stay out of trouble and God bless